going on, people? Just watching this old uh, Shocking Blue video. The band that had the big hit, Venus. You know, when I was a kid, I thought that was a guy. It was so funny when I finally saw a video of the band Shocking Blue doing the song Venus and saw it was um, Mariska. I was really thrown, but is it, but um, that has to do with perception and age. You know, I was uh, when that first came out in '69. I was uh, what, 14, 13, 14, and it, it sounded like a guy to me. Love the song, still love the song, still have the album, Shocking Blue. I'm not gonna try to dig it up. I do have it. How are you folks doing? Oh, it's uh, Monday the 11th of April. Cheers. You know, the thing that got me to put up the um, camera today, because there are some days, even though it seems like I regularly make a video every day, there are times I don't make videos every day. It really is to do with how what's up with me that day so what prompted me to get on and maybe say a word or two was a comment from um, my friend Pat Omaha Pat Bullock on a couple older uh, a couple of videos back and the question was do you find that as you get older you have fewer friends now my com my response to him was a curt no, although, in fact, excuse me, there is probably something to that observation that as we get older and we just settle in to um, our routine, that a lot of the connections that we had when we were younger tend to um, fade into the background. But what I have found and particularly because I stay involved with younger people, is that my age really has very little to do with how social I am. It's always up to me. And the age factor is part of people fading away into the background, passing away, changing interests, whatever. But I actually still have days when it's like um, folks want to get together and it's like I don't want to be bothered and um, so I, I think it's it's always up to us it's up to you to break out of whatever routine you're doing that has you feeling like you don't have enough friends or don't have any friends is someone supposed to come out of the blue and knock on your door and invite you into their world? We all wish shit like that would happen, or some of us do. But it's not like that. It's on us to reach out. I find it um, easy to, in, to connect with other people. So it's kind of why I protect myself and am not always out milling about and mixing it up with people because it's, it can get be exhausting. Yeah, those um, Italian sound uh, library records I bought this week and I went through them and listened to them all the way through actually and it was like that was a fun ride. You know, I could actually do that a lot more than just play a lot of rock and roll hits or uh, commonly known music it was really fun I'll show some records um, but first because um, I'm talking to you folks um, I see that the Red Hot Chili Peppers are number one right now I'm really happy for you fans seriously their music um, fills a gap that is a large gap in, I think, modern American American culture. They, in some ways, along with the Foo Fighters, represent the dying breed of rock bands. 
and Chili Peppers are obviously not a bona fide rock band, but they come from that background. And um, so I'm really happy for the band, for their success, and for the fans. And as a result, I keep checking it out. And it's um, some pretty mundane stuff, you know, but there's a, there's a need for that, okay, in the world. So I'm glad they're here. I did a blind pull. Sometimes it's ne it's necessary for me to do that, or some of my records I'll never play. Mark Moulin, I believe he was from Belgium. He was in the band Placebo. Plus he had that um, hit Moscow Disco as Telex. This is um, an unofficial reissue of his solo album. This is really the bomb. It's that cool um, European take on jazz that comes out of the nucleus kind of a soft machine sort of they don't sound like that but if you hear this you'll you, you'll catch what I'm saying there's a there's more of a European flavor than an American flavor to this jazz rock this is a really good album real tasty Mark Moulin um, Sam Suppy Sam Suppy whatever that's a play on words or something I'm not quite catching. This was another um, blind pull last night because it's a band that uh, I, I like, but a, but not a whole lot. Uh, Latte milk, tea and milk, milk and tea, Papillon, Italian band, very much designed after the sound of not Emerson, Lake and Palmer, but the Nice the band before Emerson, Lincoln Palmer. These guys are definitely riffing on the organ trio thing. And um, it's, it's pretty good. This is one where the, the, vocal, the vocal melody is kind of um, sing-songy and um, um, I don't particularly like it, actually. I like the uh, or the um, instrumental passages. The vocals are a drag on here for me, but the music this is this is pretty pretty strong. This came up last night, and so I ended up playing the whole album because it's <laughs> this guy's really good. Stephen Wilson, four and a half. Um, some of this could have been porcupine tree material. I think some of it, I think actually one of these songs is a porcupine tree song on here. Excuse me, I just listened to it and just, just got into it. Don't Hate Me, yeah. The version of Don't Hate Me on here is really good. Real fine, fine, fine. Really glad that I um, got those those can reissues. Actually, uh, have played them all all the way through now. Love that music very much. Still, as I um, kind of go through, not really go through, but it's part of what's happening as I play records right now is still kind of weeding out. And this was one I thought might be going, but it's not. The Coachmen. Ten Compositions, New Frontiers, and Free Rock. Um, Ecstatic Peace put this out, Thurston Moore's label. When I first got this, I just didn't have the patience for it. But I put it on last night, and it and I and I got it. You know, it's it's really um, kind of raw, primal. Particularly the percussion is like not trying to be a drummer. It's just like tribal. And um, once I let go of that, because drums are, I love good drumming. Then I started to get the um, kind of the primal howl of the, uh, what these people are doing. Thurston Moore was a part of this band. I had, didn't look to see if he's on this one. Doesn't matter. But it was like, oh, okay, that's, yeah. I found it. I found it. I found what it had to offer to me, so I'm keeping it. 
I showed this like, the other day, but I've listened to it a couple of times and I'm really glad I bought this. This is a new album for me. Ichiko Aoba. Um, I love this music. I do like her voice as well, as it turns out. But these arrangements, this music, um, there's a hint of um, minim minimalist classic classicalism or classicism in her writing. Uh, this is beautiful. What is the name of this album? Windswept Adan. So this is a new album that I can highly recommend. Beautiful, the whole album. Beautiful. Like I said before, it's like when you see watercolors, it's like listening to a watercolor. It's beautiful. Tried to listen to the news today. Can't start to see that. One A is talking about climate change. We've already blown it, you know. So we just live. How about a quick poll, right? Just right back here, right? Don't make it. Don't make it too hard. Although we may have seen this stuff before, maybe not. Lagonia. This is a reissue of this. Are they from Chile, Peru? They're from Peru, recorded in 1971. This is a hard to find album, Lagonia, right? Etc. And this is psychedelic, hard rock, and the cover fits it. This is uh, even slightly controversial, you know, some of the words on here. Socially um, conscious. I'm glad I pulled this. I'm going to play this today. Who's heard this album? Who else owns this? Does anyone watching this video own a real copy of this? These are these are records that I'm curious about finding that I never see originals of these. Stuff like this from South America. Very seldom do I see original copies of that stuff. I've got a few. Alpha 3 and O Turco and a couple other things, but mostly that stuff's hard to find. So Lagonia is going on the on the turntable today. Let's go over here. And I hope I don't pull something I've already pulled. That's no fun. What do we got here? Well, we're in my Utopia section. Todd Rundgren is someone who I rate. And I like his band Utopia as well. This is a compilation of, of, of songs that really could have been hits. Trivia. And this is a very good album by Utopia. Oops, Wrong Planet. My band, a band I used to be in called um, Norman and the Rockwells. That was the first band I recorded with. We made my first record with them. We used to play Love is the Anther Answer off of here. Abandoned City. Is that on this album? Yep. We used to play both of those songs, and we played other Utopia songs, too. Todd Rundgren, still going out on the road now. Much respect for him. I gotta run. And, uh, my, my body says I gotta go. I'll talk to you.